right, all right. Let's stop with the cinema magic already. Our workshop today, however, looks like this. It is just initially assembled and there is still a lot of work for me to be done. Let's see what can I squeeze out of it. All moving parts are just mounted as they are. No glue added yet as the final pose have to be still decided. While disassembling the robot and preparing it for painting, let me tell you a few words about where the idea for this project came from in the first place. Well, some time ago I saw a video on YouTube where a modeler made a conversion of a machine Krieger robot. I thought to myself this is a really uh, great modeling inspiration. Unfortunately, I couldn't find such a robot model anywhere back then. Until a few months ago, when I accidentally came across a Ghost Knight kit from Hasegawa, and I already knew I had to have one. Although the parts were already put it and send it after assembly, the primer allows us to see all possible and missed per imperfections right away. The black primer additionally helps us more easily see the progress of sending. Of course, we start sending with paper or sponge of a larger gradation to slowly move to a smaller one, which in the end polishes rather than sends the plastic. The very first thing I missed in the Hasagaba kit was details, such as screws or bolts. And since they can be made quite easily, I decided to show you how to do it. As you can see, with a proper tool, simple, and the effect is downright delightful. It literally takes a few minutes to make this amount of screws. Since the plastic glue would dissolve the undercoat, I glued them to the surface using CA glue. I will easily remove the glue residues with a debonder later. Forgive me for going straight into the painting phase by passing the entire phase of assembly. However, this is a simple kit. And simple enough that it's not worth wasting your time on me showing you that. I guess. Regardless, it made the whole project contained in one episode, so there is a plus too. Back to what's on the screen. After laying down the last coat of Mr. Surfacer black primer, which has a satin texture, I applied two coats of polished aluminium from Alclad Metal Line. This will be the base on which we will build the next color layers.
Immediately after laying down a layer of polished aluminium, I covered all the parts with scratched effect fluid, which will make it easier for me to chip and age the figure later. As for the base color, I chose light blue from Hobby Color. I immediately liked its pale shade, which will go well with the olive camo I will soon apply. With all these beautiful surface contours, there was no way to avoid highlights. I achieved this effect by gradually diluting light blue with, with white paint. I used about 3 runs of highlighting. I will also point out that this project is particularly important to me mainly for another reason. Namely, this particular robot, Machine Krieger Ghost Knight, has caught the eye of my son Alex and I'm making it just for him. So, you know, no pressure here. <clears throat> really, I really wanted to come out good as possible and to hit his taste. Because, you know, it's my son and I want him to feel special. He deserved this. For sure. Ok, so it is time to take our equipment of display and give it the character of an actual instrument of war terror. From under the paint, in all those scratches and abrasions, the silver primer is peeking out and it looks, at least in my opinion, insane.
Remember when I mentioned about camouflage? Well, it's time to lay it down and then give it a decent maltreating. However, before that happens, I previously put a layer of gloss paint on top of that and a layer of heavy chipping effect fluid. This time, the paint will no longer have such a chance with the brush as in previous approach. I really wanted the camo to be as damaged, peeled and washed out as possible. It was as if someone had applied it some time ago and then came to the conclusion that renewing it didn't make the slightest sense anyway. So markings on the camo suggest their addition later in service. Here you can see how I aged the decal markings. You have to be very careful not to tear off too much of the surface or wreck the decals. 
especially that I run the whole procedure just after decals dried. Unfortunately, if you put the varnish, you will not get this effect anymore. Instead, you can then still age the markings with the sanding. Since I have already managed to vary the colors quite a bit on the model, I added very few oils. Starship filth and brown wash here and there. So I present to you Ghost Knight. When I designed this robot in my head I imagined dozens of models and hundreds of improvements. However, when it came to trying it on, it turned out that many of my ideas would be far too much and the model would lose its raw beauty and the only gain would be a Christmas tree effect. <laughs> But wait a minute, are you guys missing something here too? Well, that's right, the base! Well, let's see what we can do in here. I first lightly sanded the surface of the base for better adhesion of turned earth ground to the substrate. It will play the role of the ground after molding. The entire surface has been painted with flat earth, which will be the base color for the entire composition of the stand.
Hey, who is sneaking to my workbench? <laughs> As you can see, my kids love to spend time around my hobby. As it turns out, model making can bring people together. But really, my kids often study, rest or indulge in their passions next to my workshop. And here I always have the time and attention to talk freely to them. You know it well, presence matters. Try it yourself. This, what you see under the robot's foot, is a squashed large battery from some other large machine. I added some cables to add variety to the ground. The scenario of the base seemed a little too harsh to me, so I added some life in the form of bushes. I was still thinking about grass, but it would be already a bit too many elements. I think so. Some final touches and big cleanup before grand opening. I had also to remember about electrolytes spilled from the battery, for which I used glossy lacquer. And so, this time is really the final presentation of the Machine and Krieger Ghost Knight. A deadly machine that is an impenetrable barrage for enemy air units. 
It can also destroy from a great distance and with deadly precision ground targets. In general, it's just cool piece of machinery. And now some general conclusions from the construction. Well, the assembly was really easy and did not require excessive work. This is a model that you can build straight out of the box and it will already look great. But you can also play around a bit and add something from yourself, enrich the model, make it truly your own. This is what I did as well. Especially since the recipient of the model is a special customer, my son. I hope that he will like it and will enjoy peeking at the shelf above his bed where the model will stand. In the meantime, thank you for visiting my channel and spending time together. I don't know how about you, but I'm ready for a new project. Once again, from World War II. Hmm, what to do next? Hmm, more details coming soon. And for now, stay cool, safe and have fun while model making. Ciao!